Hi and welcome to Vax Bug Out Survivor. And today I've brought with me something new. It's a cassette stove and it runs on butane cylinders. Now it's a bit different to the butane propane mix. That is expensive stuff and not that easy to source in situ. You can order it, of course you can, and it can come to your door. But if you're in a town or a village and you find a little corner shop, they're not going to stock your brand of butane and propane mix. But I found little butane canisters everywhere. Supermarkets, corner shops, hardware stores. And I'll show you the actual gas it runs on now. Great, I'm going to have a cup of tea. I'm going to treat myself. These are the little canisters. Butane. Do you know how much that cost? 80 pence. And it, if you get a multi deal of these online, they're, they're, they can work out really, really cheap. I've seen a couple of the jet boil canisters, two for 16 quid. And I looked at how long they burn for, and I thought that was an expensive way of running a stove. So the stove to fit the gas looks a bit retro, which I like. I bought this from overseas, it arrived quickly. And this is the stove that fits the cartridges. And I'm gonna call this the LEM, LM, Lunar Module. You'll see why from the Apollo missions. You see, it has the lander legs. Pull the lander legs down, which is on the ground supports feet. There you go, we're coming down to land on the moon there. Eagle, you're looking great. Coming up nine minutes. We're now in the approach phase, everything looking good. Altitude 5,200 feet. Yeah, yeah, the descent. Boat control, both auto, descent engine command override off. Engine arm off. 413 is in. We copy you down, Eagle. Griffin, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. There you go, playtime over. Pot support legs, which just pull out. Diagonal corner to corner, nine inch. You can support quite a wide fry pan on there. Well, pot of your choice. If you have a smaller cup, because I like cup cooking, because I just have either freeze dried or just warm drinks. I just fold it all in and a smaller cup will fit onto there. Here's where you'd put the actual canister. Very, very simple. A regulator valve here, up and down, and a piezo ignition, which is the automatic little click. So I shouldn't need the uh, cigarette lighter. Now, the piezo ignition was temperamental. Some days it works, some days it doesn't, and I'm probably not pronouncing that properly, but I don't care. We're just looking at the stove. Let's connect up the gas. I'll show you how easy this is. Put my eyes on, otherwise we'll blow ourselves up. Bottom section fits to the bottom here. This little cutout groove there on the can goes into that section there. It's really easy. I've just got to make sure that that nozzle fits into there. It leaked the first time I did this, but it doesn't now. I thought that would be the first thing to go on this would have been the seal here and that would leak. It's not been that way so far. So I brought with me a little brew kit because I knew I'd be having a brew. But whether I've remembered to bring the coffee, I don't know. But I'll still boil water for you and show you. 
I'm using the glacier and it boils water at quite a nice rate as well. I don't know how many kilowatts it puts out. There's not a lot of information on the box itself. So it's a generic branded unit and there's not a lot of information and it almost fits into a mess tin other than the pot legs if i could remove the pot legs that would fit into a mess tin now i don't think the actual cartridge would no the cartridge wouldn't but the stove would if i just remove the pot legs it came very quickly from china only took about 11 or 12 days but they quoted 30 odd days so that come pretty quick um card stove they're calling it here i call them card i call them cassette stoves uh solid and durable small volume now they're calling this a picnic stove rather than a backpacking stove i think this is a backpacking stove it's that kind of size that's good for a backpack um, I have picnic stoves and they're a lot bigger such as the Coleman's and the feather lights and things like that but I class them as a picnic stove I, I think this is a backpacking stove pretty easy let's just try and light the piezo ignition while I dig through and see if ever I've got any coffee let's have ourselves a good time with some creamer and sugar and coffee. I know what you were thinking. Naughty, naughty. Okay, let's see if we can get everything fired up now. Let's turn it on, give it a click. Oh, it didn't want to work. So temperamental that. Oh, that's a real shame. It's so temperamental. I. I shouldn't imagine it's very difficult to fix either um, there's only one screw holding the whole lot together but I just don't know how to fix that kind of ignition I'll research it it can't be that hard give it some extra welly it's quite a fast little boil so I'm gonna start getting this brew on otherwise that water will be boiled before I know it now you notice I haven't got a windshield with this because it's a power burner and the wind is getting up here milk and creamer into cup so I've not owned this stove for very long just a couple of weeks or so and I've only been using it intermittently so I don't know the kind of um, burn time you're gonna get out of a canister I believe somewhere in the region of about an hour now each canister I'm getting for 80 pence the actual stove itself was nine pounds including delivery all the way from King Kong and so that's a tenner stove and fuel I don't know how cheap you want to go with a stove but if you're willing to wait just a, w a week or so this is an amazing little backup stove it might even make into your main stove I don't know I just don't know yet that's not going to take long at all now not really a bus crafting stove not a prepper's stove because the fuel would be too difficult to source compared to my multi fuel stove which I consider a good prepper stove I'm going to have a go at adjusting it into a simmer that's not a bad simmer if i was to take the pot support legs off it would fit into the nato rectangular mess tin set a lot of lads in the forces these days are using the jet boil it does all fit into one pouch which is nice I just don't like the fact that the canisters for the jet boil aren't easy enough to source while you're out in the field. You can't just nip to um, a supermarket or a hardware store and say, have you got the fuel for a jet boil or a callus stove? They're just not accessible enough. Butane cartridges are a lot more accessible. 
So if you was doing a longer trail and you like backpacking, camping, you don't have to worry about sourcing the fuel easy enough. I'm going to turn this off. There you have it. Good to be out. Good to be out. It is really, really quiet here. And now I've had to move to a different location to film this just because I wanted some peace and quiet. Nobody comes here. It's just scrubland. I think it's a beautiful bit of scrubland. It's peaceful. And in a minute, it'll be the place we're going to have a cup of tea. In total, that took, I'd say, about four minutes to bring about 300 mil of coffee to a boil. So compared to my booster plus one, it doesn't boil water incredibly rapidly, but sufficiently. Like I said, I have boiled a litre in that in about six minutes, a full litre. So it's not bad, is it? Uh, remember, it only cost a tenner, well, nine quid. I spent a quid on a tin of fuel. Let's see how it makes a coffee. Bloody hell. Incredibly hot. What a stupid things to do. Wow. Ah. I never learn, do I? I'll do that again later, I bet you. Now, packing it up is relatively simple also. This time I'm going to test how hot this is. Still warm, hot, but uh, cool enough to touch. Underside, still a bit warm. The actual body is warm, but not hot. And I just twist. And then like that to undo it. I really like this, you know, between you and me. I think for round nine quid. Oh shit. Just tell me how peaceful it was and everything. Farmer turns up. <laughs> typical. Absolute typical. I'm hiding behind this tree. <laughs> but I'm not going till I finish my brew, I can tell you that. Coffee takes a priority there. Yeah, it's a shame about the piezo ignition or piezo ignition, depending on how you want to pronounce that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I shouldn't imagine it's difficult to fix. Bring a spare lighter with you. It was nine quid. I am not expecting miracles from this. But I know there are people on budgets and this is going to be right up your street. I don't know how long it's going to last for. I haven't had it long enough to review. It's a, a, just a first impressions show and tell. It packs up really small. It is considered to be a picnic stove, but there it is in its little square stuff sack. In comparison, there's a little Ronson lighter. It's about the height of it, a little more than the width. So imagine a lighter like that cubed. It's much the same as that. There, th this is only a 45 litre pack. There's not a hell of amount of room in these little pockets. To give you an idea, this is the GSI Glacier and, or Glacier, and it just about goes into a side pocket like that, along with some accoutrement, such as the cup and other bits and bobs. But on the other side there, the stove fits in really, really well. I bought with me a tin, an old tin, used to have coffee in. I use that sometimes like a belly tin and put that on the stove and then nest that in. So already you can see in one pocket was the actual little square tin and in the next storage, something like that would be my billy pot 
and gas stove. I've got room for at least two of the gas canisters, giving me a good couple of hours. I'm only surmising that it's about an hour per ten per burn. It might be less, it might be a hell of a lot more. I just haven't burnt one out yet. I've used that tin there for the past five days, that's how long I've had it. Um, and I've just been brewing up with it and making things such as noodles, just anything where you just need to boil water. If you do have problems firing this up in the winter, it just makes into an almost candle sized flame. It doesn't want to burn. And all you have to do, boil up some water with whatever energy you have in the cartridge. Once it's warm, wet up a towel. You can wrap your cartridge like that and it'll be sufficient enough to burst this back into life. So a nice little budget cassette stove from China there. I really like it. Um, like I said, for 10 quid, you, I don't expect miracles. But so far, it's been adequate. It might be great for a little weekend backpacking. Boy Scouts definitely will love that. People on a budget will love that. Um, now I do have a prepper stove other than my BRS Booster Plus 1, which we're going to have a look at um, a little later in the series. And that is multi-fuel, but that is butane. And your jet boil is butane propane mix. So it, it's all subjective now to your own requirements. If you don't like it, don't buy it. Um, if you're on a budget, right up your street. Now I've got to think about getting across this field. And the farmer is in his little white pickup truck. And he hasn't moved and he hasn't seen me. And there's a field of bulls. Now he's locked the gate with the bulls on the other side of the fence there. And I've got a feeling he's opened that gate and let the bulls into the field I need to cross. There is only one way out of this place. I hate bulls. Now I've had them charge me last week. One charged me and the others joined in. Now I don't know if it would have stopped before he got to me because I just cleared this fence in about one step. Whoa, gone. Look back. And he was screeching to a stop like that, like a cartoon character digging his hooves into the ground and skidding to a stop uh, <laughs> but that's what I'm up against now just to show you a stove unbelievable okay so I've been Bex from channel Bex bug out survivor that has been the cassette stove from China it's been about 10 quids worth shop around you might even get it cheaper and I've got across that field and I am not in the mood for running. And if the farmer doesn't get me, the bulls might. See you next time.